We're beginning a brand new series that we're calling That's Life. Have you ever heard that phrase, that's life? You ever heard that? How many of you said that before? Hey, that's life, right? Did you ever wonder what that really means? What it means that, hey, that's life. I think it means something like this. Life can be very unpredictable and be and, and have unexpected, difficult times. It can have many twists and turns, good and bad moments, lots of up and downs. But hey, that's, that's life. Years ago, Frank Sinatra wrote a song, and he called it, That's Life. And the lyrics go something like that, something like this. That's life. That's what all the people say. You're riding high in April, and you shot down in May. How many feel like, hey, that's life? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your word. God, I ask you, help me to teach your word today. God, I pray, help me to deliver your word in a way that is impactful, that is clear, God, I pray, anoint the ears and the hearts of those that are hearing. Holy Spirit, come. You're the teacher. You teach what only you can teach. Holy Spirit, you are the revealer. Reveal. Open our understanding and cause us to have, Lord, insight and light into our own lives, Lord, as you desire for us to have. God, I pray that you clear the atmosphere, that, God, you would cause all distractions to cease. We declare every plan and tactic of the devil's power broken, and we declare this is holy ground this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Now, the reality, life is full of up and downs. Is that right? I mean, one phone call, one email, one knock at the door, uh, just one bit of information can just change your life drastically from one moment to the other. Life is filled with difficult and devastating experiences. I don't think anybody knows that better than people in Lafayette right now, right? The writer of Ecclesiastes said it like this. Ecclesiastes 8.14. Sometimes something useless happens on earth. Bad things happen to good people, and good things happen to bad people. Now, isn't that true about life? You know, listen, I can't fully explain it, but bad things happen to good people. Isn't that right? You know, this morning, is that right? Bad things happen to good people. You know, this morning I got here about 5.30, 5.15, something like that, ready to finish my sermon. And uh, my computer, my, my Bible study on my computer wouldn't open up. It, it wouldn't work, and it was, it was locked up. So I went, you know, I, I know about computers. So I just kind of went behind and, and found, you know, the PC uh, icon and clicked on it and opened it up and said, if you need to, you know, refresh or restart or Forgot exactly what the word was. Sounded like what I needed. So I clicked on it, and, and my computer crashed. And well, there went my sermon. And I was thinking, okay, life happens. That's life, right? I called Micah Willis and say, Micah, are you up yet? And he said, yes, I am. Can you please help me? And he helped me retrieve my sermon. And so I thought we we're going to have to show a video today. But thank God for people that know about computers, right? You may not be experiencing anything tragic or devastating right now, but it's just a matter of time before you will. You know, somebody said that everybody is either coming out of a trial or a hard time, right in the middle of a trial or a hard time, or about to go in to a trial or a hard time. That's life. Life is filled with difficulties. It's filled with trials. In fact, Jesus said in Matthew 5, 45, for he gives his sunlight to both the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. And what this means is this. Life is not always fair. Life is not always fair. We don't always get what we deserve because bad things happen to good people just as good things happen to bad people. Now, you know, some people think that if something bad happens to them, then there must be something wrong. They must have done something wrong. And God's getting them back. And that's why these bad things are happening. Well, the truth is, we live in a fallen world, 
that's filling with fallen humanity, sinful people that God has given the free will of choice. And because of being given the freedom of choice, people make wrong choices and bad decisions and bad things happen to good people. Is that right, saints? It's life. And because of this, the unfortunate reality is all of us have experienced some level of brokenness in our life. In John 16 and 33, Jesus said, Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. How many of you ever experienced a trial or something sorrowful? The reality is everybody in this room. Jesus said in this life you are going to experience trials and you're going to experience things that are sorrowful. Everybody gets hurt. Everybody experiences pain. Everybody goes through some deep psychological, emotional, relational, or spiritual brokenness in their life. It's the way that life goes. Whenever you think about it, some of us have been broken since a very young age because of the physical, verbal, or even sexual abuse we've experienced as young children. Think about, think about this. Think of those that were physically beat, that were physically tormented, physically punished by inflicting pain as children. They experience that. I mean, that's terrible. But you know, there's a good chance somebody in this room has experienced that. Think of those who have been told over and over again, you're stupid, you're dumb, you're a failure, you're an idiot. Over and over again, told that. Think of those in this community as well as the possibility in this room that have experienced some form of abuse of any kind, whether it's physical or sexual, at the hands of those who were supposed to be the ones that were most trusting and most caring and most loving for them. You know, I tell you what, there's no way you can experience that kind of stuff without it having some kind of residual effect on your life. It causes brokenness in your life. And then think about those that have been broken through the rejection and the betrayal of, of a close friend or loved one. You know, when you think about the children who have had parents, the dad they never knew, and their mom goes, put them on the doorstep and puts them and leaves them there, turns around for them never to see their mother again or never see her until they're grown. No daddy, no mother, and they're left to be cared for by people that maybe or maybe don't care about them. Are y'all hearing me out there? You know, think about those, those who have been crushed by infidelity in the marriage. Those that have been crushed by the betrayal of a friend that was supposed to be their most trusted ally, and that friend turns on them, turns their back on them, and walks out on them. Man, I mean, that, go, that hits you at the core of your very being. Isn't that right? But that happens every day. And these types of experiences cause us to be cut deep, leaving our hearts bleeding and broken inside. Life happens. And then think about those who have been broken, not by what they've experienced, but what they haven't experienced. You know, like, for example, some, some are broken simply because they never did, they never were accepted, loved, nurtured. They've been neglected. They've been, they've been cast aside by the very ones that were supposed to take care of them. So they're broken not because of what they've experienced, but what they haven't experienced. They never experienced somebody affirming them, loving them, encouraging them, wrapping their arms around them for whatever reason. And now they're broken. I'm sure there's possibly some here today in a room this size with this many people. I'm pretty sure. There's some in this room right now that never got nurtured, never got encouraged, You've never felt valued, accepted, or loved. And I tell you, you know what? I don't think you can grow up experiencing neglect, experiencing the absence of nurture and love and care, and it not have some form of brokenness in your life. 
And so I think there's many people walking around that are broken. You know? And then there's the brokenness caused by traumatic experiences in life, like the sudden death of a loved one, the exposure to some violent act, to some scary situation, near-death experience, bad, terrifying weather, those kinds of things, core accidents, robberies, rape, house fires. All these things will affect you. You say, no, I just brush that off and I just move forward. Well, you know what? We are delicately made. We are intricately made. And God has made us with a spirit that is very tender and very sensitive. And there's no way that you can go through that. You know, we've been praying for Lafayette for healing, not just physical healing, but for psychological healing, for emotional healing. Why? Because this event that happened in Lafayette has traumatized a lot of people. Whenever you experience trauma, it's amazing what could happen in your life. It's amazing the things that can go wrong in your life. You know, what am I trying to say today? I'm trying to say that all of us in this room have experienced some level of brokenness. All of us, every one of us. None of us have it all together and are just this perfect form of a human being. We've all been marred and scarred and tainted and messed up by something that we've experienced in life. And you know what? Our brokenness translates into the crippling of our lives. It cripples our life. Many of us have been disabled. We have been impaired in life. And we're not functioning in the full capacity that God would desire for us to function in. In Acts chapter 3, which is where you should be, in verse 1 it says, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At 3 in the afternoon, now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Now Paul tells us, for whatever reason, there was a man who had been crippled from birth, the scripture says, and he was carried to the, to the gate, to the temple gate every day, begging for money from those who were going into the temple to worship. Now, apparently something happened to this man early in life that caused him to, to have some kind of handicap. It altered his life and left him crippled, the Bible says. And, and even though he may have not known what happened, whether it happened in the womb, whether it happened after he was, whether he was young and he, he got dropped, or we don't know. But he's been, he was crippled from birth. And even though he may not know or remember what happened to him, it obviously negatively affected his adult life. And I believe this is a picture of many of us in our churches. We've been crippled by life's negative experiences. And we might not know exactly what we went through. We might not know the effect that our experience has had on us, but here we are as adults and we're trying to function, but we've been crippled. We've been disabled. We've been impaired in our adult life and we're not functioning in the way, the full way that God desires for us to function in. These experiences have left us broken. Now there's different areas and different ways our brokenness affects us, but let me just give you four. One is our brokenness cripples us emotionally. You know, have you ever wondered why some people are a lot stronger emotionally than others? Some people just seem to just have trouble staying emotionally stable and, and others are just emotionally strong. Well, I think the answer is because sometimes it's simply because of what some people have gone through. They've gone through so many traumatic experiences. They've gone through so much hurt, so much heartache, so many devastating experiences that it's left them bleeding emotionally. Come on, are y'all out there? Are y'all hearing me? You see, it's, it's been known that, it's commonly known that brokenness causes traumatic and devastating effects in our life that causes us to suffer emotionally. Some of us struggle with depression because of some brokenness in our life, some devastating experience. Some of us suffer with anxiety and worry. 
And it's hard for us to just maintain a level of peace in our life because something happened somewhere that just caused us to be emotionally disturbed. Some of us are, are dealing with rejection on a daily basis or a feeling of inferiority or inadequacy or unworthiness, all because of a level of brokenness in our life. Some of us struggle with fear because of our brokenness. You know, I remember, I remember Tiny and I ministering to this lady, and, and she was struggling with all kinds of emotional problems. She was struggling with, with inferiority. She was struggling with rejection. She was struggling with feelings of, of, of unworthiness. She was struggling with, with anger. She had an anger problem. And, and all these things. She was fearful one moment, angry the next moment, feeling unworthy the next moment. She was all over the place. And as we began to minister to her, we found out that whenever she was young, she was abused by her father. And not only was she abused by her father, but her mom walked out of her life. So the very two people that were supposed to be her caregivers, those were the ones that inflicted the most pain in her life. Wow. And so now here she is trying to put the pieces together as an adult, trying to keep her life together. But she's all broken. Her brokenness was causing her a tremendous amount of emotional problems. Listen, no doubt trauma, traumatic life experiences will leave you broken emotionally. And, and then a second crippling effect of our brokenness is not only does it cripple us emotionally, but it cripples our behavior. It affects our behavior. You know, it's very common for people that have been broken in life to turn to dysfunctional ways of trying to cope. Like excessive drinking, or drug use, or, I mean, you name it, binging, purging, overeating, et cetera, et cetera, gambling, pornography, some form of addiction that they're using in an attempt to try to kill or mask the pain that's on the inside of them. And it helps for a little while, but then whenever they wake up in the morning, the pain returns. And then, not only that, but, you know, it's very common for people to be easily given over to, to sinful temptation whenever they've been broken in life. Some people have a greater resistance to sinful temptation than others. And it's not because they love God more than the other people. They just, they're just given to more temptation. Why? Because of their brokenness. They're, they're more given to immorality or, or, or given to lying or, or cheating or violence or, or stealing and, and, and all this kinds of stuff. And it's, it's really, the root of it is really because they're broken. These sinful behavior problems many times are just empty attempts to try to mask the pain that they can't find anything to, to, to help them with. And then... The third crippling effect of our brokenness is our brokenness cripples our relationships with others. You know, I mean, some people, they just, they just know how to build relationships. I mean, having friends is not a problem for them. Getting along is not a problem for them. But then there are others, it just seems like they struggle. They struggle with building relationships. Well, I believe the more broken and wounded we are, the harder it is to build relationships. I think the more broken we are on the inside, the more we struggle developing and maintaining meaningful and strong relationships. You know, somebody said, you know, hurting people hurt people and are easily hurt by people. It's just the, it's just the way life is. You see, brokenness will cause you to build walls. It'll cause you to withhold love and cause you and force you into this place of isolation. And it's all because of some brokenness that you've experienced in your life. It'll cause you, even when you try to get in relationships, have, have a problem with jealousy or easily feeling rejected or, or, or being easily offended. It's relational problems. So in short, our brokenness will cripple us relationally and keep us from developing meaningful 
relationships. And so we go around life and we say, what is the problem? Why can't I develop strong relationships? Not realizing that it's something that we've experienced somewhere in life that has left a residual in our life. And like the man at the gate, we might not even know what it was. We might not even remember what it was or think that it had such an impact on us. But the reality is we're broken and we're bleeding and we're having issues in life. And then a final life crippling effect of our brokenness is our brokenness ultimately cripples our relationship with God. In Acts chapter 3, in that story we just read, it tells us this crippled man stayed. He stayed outside the temple. He never went in the temple. Why? Because of his, his crippledness. Because of his brokenness. And I think this is a picture that even though we're in church, like we're at the gate of the temple, we're at the gate of the presence of God, but somehow we never fully engage and get into the presence of God. Why? Because we're crippled. Because we've got broken. See, the problem with our brokenness is it usually causes us to sin and then turn away from God in shame and guilt and condemnation. So whenever we're broken, instead of running to God, that's the last thing we feel like doing. We want to run from God. And we don't say, I'm running from God. We just do it with our body language. We just do it with our behavior. We just do it in our minds. And we just turn from God. Romans 6, 19 says, I put this in human terms because you are weak in your natural selves. Just as you used to offer the parts of your body in slavery to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer them in slavery to righteousness leading to holiness. When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. So here's how it normally works. Our brokenness usually leads us to turn away from God and ultimately into sin. And then after that, sin enslaves us, leading us further into bondage and further away from God, which causes us then to begin hiding from God because we're filled with guilt, with shame, with embarrassment, and we don't want to turn to God. That's what happened to Adam and Eve. After they sinned, what did they do? They didn't go run to God and said, Oh, Lord, I made a mistake. I sinned. No, the Bible says they hid from God. In Genesis chapter 3 and verse 10, Adam said, I, the Lord said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was, a ne- I was naked, so I hid. Do you think it's possible that even though you go to church, you're hiding from God? You're afraid of God? I mean, why did you get up and come here? Certainly you're not afraid of God. Certainly you're not trying to hide from God or run from God. See, sometimes without knowing it, that's exactly what we're doing. See, many of us are limiting our relationship with God because we're hiding from God. Our shame, our guilt, our condemnation is keeping us from going further with God. You may be suffering in your relationship with God and you say, man, why is it that some people, they just, man, they just seem like they're so close to God that they're on first name basis. And I don't know if he even knows I exist. And you feel so distant from God. I believe it's because of the spiritual crippling of brokenness. You know, for instance, you know, we say, listen, God loves you. He's your heavenly father. And he he loves you. And some of us sit back and say, what? He's what? He's my heavenly father? Well, the only thing I remember of a father is he was abusive. He abandoned me. He scolded me. He was harsh on me. He never left me alone. He was such a bad influence in my life. And you're telling me God is like him? And we got a wrong perspective of God. Are y'all hearing me out there? And so you come and we're worshiping God. And instead of being able to just like, oh, Father God, and you're ready to jump in his arms, there's something inside of you that says, I don't know if he can be trusted. I don't know if he's going to abandon me just like my natural father abandoned me. And so there's a, bla- there's a break and there's a breakdown in the relationship, in the perspective of who God is. And then you think of the people that, you know, they have trouble experiencing the grace of God. 
Because all they ever experienced was you get out of line, buddy, you're going to get my wrath. If you don't toe the line, if you don't live a life of perfection, you are going to get condemnation. You're going to get ridiculed. You're going to get the harshness of the law. You better toe the line. And so they grow up, they come out alive, they come to church, and they're trying to serve God. And we say, the grace of God is here, y'all. The grace of God gives you freedom and gives you liberty in your life. And you don't have to labor anymore. You don't have to strive anymore. Just tap in the grace of God that's sufficient for you. We say, I've never experienced that. I mean, what do I have to do to, to earn it? And how much, uh, how long do I have to work for it? And, 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 there, and we say, no, you don't have to work for it. It's just given to you. It's God's riches at Christ's expense. It's the grace of God. But something on the inside of us, because past messages we received from the brokenness of our life, says, oh, there's no way that I could receive the grace of God. I, I, I'm not good enough for it. I haven't earned it. I'm not living a, a clean enough, holy enough, pure enough, perfect life to measure up to the grace of God. And we're hindered in our relationship with God. Come on, we need healing. We need healing in our life. Are y'all with me out there? I'm talking to somebody out there. You see, some of us, we've been in church a long time and we've done the best that we could. But the reality is we're being crippled by the brokenness of our life. We've been crippled emotionally. We've been crippled in our, in, in our behavior. We've been crippled in our relationships with others. And we're being crippled in our relationship with God. And God's saying, hey, listen, health and wholeness can only come after we receive the healing power of God. And be healed from our brokenness. You can be healed from brokenness. You can be healed. This is what Psalms 147 and verse 3 says. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. Did you catch that? He heals the brokenhearted. You see, listen. Excessive alcohol might numb the pain, but it won't heal your heart. You see, you might be able to get a prescription to make you feel better and cope with life for a little while, but it'll never go all the way down to healing your heart. And you will always live with the pain that you've always lived with. But the power of God wants to come and heal the brokenness of your heart. Amen? The Lord has an amazing ability to heal the deep wounds in our life like nothing else can. He wants to heal us. Remember what happened to the crippled man at the temple called Beautiful? Remember whenever they dropped him off of that gate? The crippled man received his healing and, and, and his health to wholeness. The Bible says in Acts 3 and 1, or, or in Acts 3 and 2, now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate, called beautiful, where he was put down every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for, what did he ask for, saints? Peter looked straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave him this, his attention, expecting to get something from them. And Peter said, silver or gold I do not have. But what I have I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. And then taking them by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped up to his feet and he began to walk. Then he went with them. Where did he go? Into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Amen. Come on. His life changed that day. Come on. He didn't stay outside the temple. He went in the temple and he joined the host in the temple. And he began to praise his God. Amen. Now listen, the crippled man received his healing to health and oldness. Not after, God, not after what he thought he needed, which was money, but after he encountered the power and the love of Jesus. See, that's what we need. We need to encounter the power and the love of Jesus. Listen, what the crippled man was seeking and asked for was not really what he needed. He thought he needed money. He thought money would solve all his problems. Some of us, we think if our spouse can just get better, well, everything's going to be all right. Some of us think if our parents would get off our back, everything would be all right. 
We, we just think that, you know, it's somewhere out there, the solution. But the solution is not externally, it's internally. We need the love and the grace of God to come in and just put salve on the brokenness in our life. And then we can be like the crippled man, praising God, amen? We need the power of God. Sometimes we try to get healed by focusing on the wrong things. You see, like we deal with the fruit. You know, and I get this picture. Like here's our life, it's like a tree. And we got, we got these, these behavior problems. We lose our temper, we get angry, we critical, we're judgmental, we're harsh, we're hard, we're, we're addicted. We got all these issues and we, we're trying to work on this fruit. And it's like, man, if I, could just, if I could just bring this anger under control, I'm not gonna be angry, I'm not gonna be angry. And somebody presses the button and boom, there we go. We're like, golly. And we're just like, man, if I could just, man, I hate, I hate to be controlled by this substance. I hate to have to rely on this to get by in life. If I could just get delivered from this, then everything would be okay. And we're working hard at the fruit. And God's saying, listen, you will never change the fruit until you allow me to cut the root. Until you allow me to get to the root of the fruit. You see, we're wasting time out here. And God's saying, what you need is to let me put my axe to the root. And whenever I cut the tree down, the fruit is going to go away. And the way, the way that we get healed of broken hearts is through the power of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Healing from brokenness only comes from experiencing the power and love of God. And listen, some of us, have thought that we're going to always be broken and we're always going to be dysfunctional. We're always going to have problems with our emotions and our relationships and our behavior. And Jesus is here to say, no, I died on the cross so that you don't have to be broken, but you can be healed. Amen. Come on. Y'all believe that? Would you stand with me? Would you stand with me? Let's close this morning in prayer. Listen what Isaiah chapter 61 and 1 says. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. This is a prophetic word from Jesus because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor and He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He may be glorified. Would you just close your eyes with me for just a second? And would you just get honest before God and just get just real before God? How many of you here today say, Todd, since you've been talking, man, I've, I've had some flashbacks. And I've been thinking of some of the experiences that I've been through in life. And I realized that, man, these things broke me. These things wounded me. These things crippled me. How many of you would say that today? Man, I can, I can relate to that. Let me see your hands. Just raise your hands all over this place. Listen, those of you that have your hands raised, I'm going to ask you to do something this morning. I'm going to ask you to slip out of, the, out of the pew and just come up here to the altar because we want to take a moment to just ask the Lord to, to release His love and release His grace. Come on, just slip out right now. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. Come on, we're here to support one another, to love one another. The truth is everybody in this room have some level of brokenness. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Would you do me a favor and just begin to pray as they come up here? Would you just begin to pray that they would just encounter the love of God? They would encounter the presence of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you guys would just step up just a little bit right here. Thank you, Father God. Now listen, as you come up here, I want you to just, just begin to open up your heart. I want you to just begin to open up your heart today. And I want you to know that the, the God that died on the cross for you loves you. He loves you and He wants to heal you and He wants to give you wholeness and He wants to give you hell and He wants to touch your life today. So I just want to encourage you to just open up your heart right now to Jesus. 
begin to open up your heart and say, Jesus, I want to be healthy. Jesus, I want to be whole. Jesus, I want to be healed today. Come on now, just begin to now just open up your heart. Come on, just open up your spirit today. Open up your life. Come on, just don't be afraid. Don't be fearful of His love. And just ask Him to just come and just fill you with His love. Just fill you. Come on, receive His love. Just take a deep breath and just let all the heaviness and all the weight on your life just just come off of you and just let God just come like the balm of Gilead. Let Him just come and just put healing on your heart. I'm going to ask the altar workers and the ministry and the ministry team to come and to just begin to just agree with you. Father, I pray today in the name of Jesus that you would release your healing power, that you would release your healing hand, that Lord, you would just touch every heart and touch every life that's in this room today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For those of you that are up here that are ready or waiting to be prayed for, do me a favor and just open your hands like this. Just, just open your hands like this. You know, I believe some of you, you've been closed off for so long that even opening up to the Lord is hard for you. And you need some help just to even let go. But come on, let's ask the Lord right now to help us. Come on, just begin to help. Just ask Him, say, Lord, would you help me? Would you help me to open up? Would you help me to just open up my heart to you? Listen, some of you in here right now, you should be up here and you didn't come up here because you're still sitting out there in shame, in guilt, and in condemnation. And the Lord wants to break that off of you right now. Father, I pray that you would just break the spirit of condemnation off of your people today. Father, you're not a God that is cruel, that is mean, that is trying to hurt and harm His people. But you're a God who loves us. It sent your only Son to die for us so that you can help us to be healed and made whole. And so, Lord, I pray that you break condemnation Lord, I pray that you break fear. I pray that you break shame and guilt. Break its power. And that, God, you release your healing right now. Would you just do me a favor and extend your hand out towards all of these that are standing here as we continue to pray for them. And let's ask God to release His healing. Let's ask God to release His his touch over them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank You and I praise You that, Lord, You're releasing Your power. You're releasing Your presence. Lord, let the love of God, let the love of God, let the love of God, let the love of God come today in a powerful way. Come on, receive His love. Come on, just take a deep breath and just release yourself into the hands of a loving God. Lord, we thank You for Your love and Your grace over this place right now. Father, may you may you bandage, Lord, the, the wound of every heart. God, may you put your salve on the bleeding of every, Lord, every person whose heart is broken today. And God, may they be a supernatural healing of hearts today in this place. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody that agreed said amen. Amen. Now listen, those of you that are up here, wait up here till we come and pray for you, okay? And you just stay here as long as you can. Nathan, can you sing that song again? And let's just let God, just, just stay still before God. And let God just come and touch you this morning.